the hell? Wow, talk about random crossover. Well, considering how popular both of these series are, I'm surprised that there hasn't been more news on this crossover. Well, it should be fun in any case. I can't wait to read it. That said, over the years, there have been many random crossovers, such as Superman and the Quick Bunny, Archie and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Archie and the Punisher, and soon Archie and the Predator. And let's not also forget Superman, Batman vs. Aliens and Predator, Superman vs. Muhammad Ali, Superman vs. Spider-Man, and of course, Spider-Man and Red Sonja. Let's talk about that last one. In the March 1979 issue of Marvel Team-Up, in a 17-page story, Spidey meets Red Sonja. It begins with Spidey swinging past a museum, an elderly mustachioed guard grabbing an amulet, transforming into a wizard. Mary Jane surprising Pete at the Daily Bugle. She grabs the sword, becomes Red Sonja, I think. They defeat a the scraggly old wizard and Pete tosses the amulet into the sea instead of webbing it up and giving it to Doctor Strange. Whoops. I mean, it's a short, fun story that would be forgivable if not for some great and moody artwork by John Byrne drawing probably the best version of Red Sonja I've ever seen. She's strong, passionate, wild-eyed. It was a nice, small, compact, fun story. So, let's ruin all of that. 28 years later, in 2007, a remake of the story was... Well, remade. Now, the original story was only 17 pages long, 18 if you count the cover, and it was only one issue. So let's expand it from one issue to five issues. To expand an already flimsy concept by 100 extra pages was just simply a case of greed, looking back on it now. So how do you expand a story like this? This story begins with Spidey swinging through the streets, stopping some crime while Mary Jane is about to perform Macbeth. A sinner touches an amulet, transforms into a creepy wizard, and then New York City is turned into a fancy version of the Middle Ages. Mary Jane touches a sword, transforming her into Red Sonja. Actually, it looks like it transports Red Sonja into her body. Uh, it's weird. It's, hey, it's comics. Venom and Hobgoblins and jack o lantern and Scorpion make appearances in here. The only reason why they're in the story, I'm assuming, is to make it longer. Spidey turns Red Sonja back into Mary Jane with a kiss, I believe. Ugh. The original reason why I bought this trade in 2008 was because of the art. I took a look at the covers and the artist was Michael Turner. And I really loved his art, and I assumed that inside the interiors would be his art. I was disappointed. Now, the art on the whole isn't really bad, at least the pencils aren't. However, the coloring and the inking, which was the inking was done by the penciler, they were off. They made the entire story look muddled. I assumed the idea was to give the book a sense of dark mood, but it doesn't work. At times, some of the panels come off as amateurish. Other times, well, there's another problem. It seems uh, the differences between Mary Jane and Red Sonia, they look the same. That shouldn't be the case. If you take a look at the original story, John Byrne gave each of the characters very distinct features. Not all redheads look alike, you know. Another issue I had with this book was some of the storytelling. When Red Sonja and Spider-Man first meet, they fight. It's a superhero comic, so that's understandable. In the original story, they fight for one page and that's it. In this version, they fight for at least six pages straight. The fighting is exciting at times, but 
most of the time, it, it just feels like padding. There are a lot of action scenes in the story, but once again, it seems to, it's just there to pad out the page count. You know, this story should have had Mr. Fantastic in because the premise was stretched beyond belief. If this story had to be remade, it should have only been about 30 to 40 pages with the one shot of the original story bundled in. It didn't need to be five issues. And the fact that there hasn't been a sequel really tells you a lot about how this comic was received. I don't recommend this comic even if you're a fan of the art. And I've never heard of the artist who did this. And I haven't seen his work since. So there you go. And until next time, goodbye. Just one more thing. Hi, my name is D.R. Harris and I'm a visual artist and YouTuber. I have two YouTube channels. D.R. Harris, self-titled, and graphic descriptions where I cover a hodgepodge of stuff, but basically animation analysis and deep thought into pop, other pop culture activities. I also have a personal website where I display my blog work and my artistic work. However, I'm starting a Patreon campaign and I really could use your help. I really want to upgrade and take my website and my YouTube channels to the next level, but in order to do that, uh, I need, need some help from you. I provide a link to my Patreon campaign in the description, and I would really like you to check it out. I understand that times are tough and you might not be able to dedicate a lot of money. And if you take a look at my Patreon campaign, you can pledge as low as $1 or as high as much as you want. Plus, you can set an amount and not go over that amount per video or per month. Even if you pledge something as low as $1, you will get something. And I'm not doing this for profit. i just doing it because in order for me to upgrade and really step my game up faster, I do need some help. So thank you for listening to this message and until my next video, goodbye.